All right, so we're going into our second day of hypothesis testing. Okay, so you kind of introduced this idea yesterday. How do you make a decision? Whatever. How do you make a decision? After you write a pair of hypotheses, your ho and your ha, all right? Ho, ho is the null hypothesis, ha is the alternative. Um, and you take sample data, how do you make a decision? You have two options, all right? You have reject the null hypothesis, also known as reject the ho. Okay. Um, Okay, you can reject the hoe or fail to reject the hoe, the null hypothesis. Now think about it, we talked about it yesterday about the um, their legal system, like the guilty system, the legal system. We never actually, when someone goes to trial, they're never actually proclaimed innocent, ever. They're proclaimed guilty or not guilty, right? We never say that person's innocent. You can say not guilty means innocent to some people, but some people are still not innocent in my book. So just think about that. This is like, you know, whoopsie, come on, guilty or not guilty. But we never claim innocence, all right? So we can reject the hoe, fail to reject the hoe, but we never say, you know, it is the alternative. It's either rejecting the first one or failing to reject the first one. All right, so the final step in performing a significance test is to draw a conclusion about competing claims, all right? We make a decision based on the strength of the evidence against the null hypothesis, just like in the legal courtroom. You make a decision if you're on the jury based on the strength of the evidence. So you're either going to go against the null hypothesis and in favor of the alternative as measured by the p-value. Now we're going to be getting some stuff today that we don't know how to do yet. So just work with me on that. We're going to learn the formula for stuff later, but we're just going to give you the information today. Now, this is very important. Small p-values give convincing evidence for the ha. So if you don't have a strong p-value, you're going to reject the hoe, all right? And large p-values fail to give convincing evidence for the ha in support of the hoe, all right? That should fit. There we go. Now, before we get into that, in the end, you'll make a decision based on the outcome of your p-value compared to your significance level. This looks like kind of like a funny-looking A. Okay, it's the alpha. The significance level will be given to you. For right now. It's going to tell you what it is. Later on, you're going to learn how to calculate it, okay? I'll tell you right now that the very popular significance level is 0.05. That's a very common one. That's a very usual one. Not always. There are other confidence levels. Another one is 0.01. Okay, it's very common to use one also. But most of the time, we're going to be using 0.05, all right? Now, what you're going to do is the p-value of a test is the probability of getting evidence for the alternative, the ha, as strong or stronger than the observed evidence for the ho. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare a p-value and we're going to compare it to the alpha. All right? It looks kind of like a two, a, whatever. All right? And we're going to try to see if it's less than or greater than. So if the p-value is less than alpha, we're going to reject the hoe. And again, we're just going to give you the alpha today. If the p-value is greater than the alpha, and I'm not going to judge you on how well you draw an alpha, then we're going to fail to reject the hoe. Okay. So, you're going to have two choices. Less than or greater than, reject or fail to reject. So, if the p-value is small, reject and conclude there's convincing evidence for the ha. Okay. Two different ways of saying it. This is another way of saying 
rejecting the hook. You're supporting the hop. But it's not just that it's small, it's less than the alpha. That's important because we're going to use greater than less than symbol. If the p-value is large, you fail to reject the hook. And when I say large, it means greater than the alpha. And then therefore there is not convincing evidence for the hop. Now, just like in the legal system, there are, you know, what some people would say, wrong verdicts. So if you fail to reject the hoe, I'm sorry, the, the hoe, it doesn't prove the hoe is true. It just means you don't have enough evidence. So you can't for certain say, oh, we reject the hoe, it's a lie. Not necessarily. We just don't have the evidence for it. Okay? So it's very possible to make a wrong decision. It happens. Just like in the legal system. Someone gets let off when most people thought they were guilty. It happens. All right. We're going to step back here in our memory a little bit. A couple sections ago, we talked about Kai. Kai was a tennis player, and he went over the summer to work on his serves. All right. And we talked about the claim was his serve percentage was 53%. All right? But after he worked with the coach, we thought he's going to get better. Right? The null and alternative hypotheses. So, first off, the ho is P is equal to 0.53. That's the percentage they gave us. Now, remember, whenever we were at the ha, there's no thinking here. We know this is going to be 0.53. Always. The number is always the same for the hoe and the hop. Get that locked in your head. What we have to do is read what it says and say three choices. Less than the hoe, equal to, or greater than. So, since it says we're expecting after working with the coach, we're expecting it to be greater. Now, this should look familiar. We had this in that section, and we talked about running 200 samples, okay? 200 simulations, better word. And out of all 200 simulations, what was the success rate for 70 or above? There was one. So that's one out of 200, okay? Which is equal to 0 0.005. Do people kiss the right way? Right is in parentheses, uh, not parentheses, quotation marks. According to this article in the San Gabriel Tribune, which is the real one, most people are kissing the right way. That's according to the study, the majority of couples tilt their head to the right when kissing. In the study, a researcher observed a random sample of 124 kissing couples, that creepy, and found that 83 out of 124. 0.669, 67% of the couples tilted their head to the right. Do these data provide convincing evidence that more than 50% tilt their heads to the right? So, first we're going to define the parameter. So, P equals. We always define something. What is it? It's a proportion of, and I'm just going to make this as simple as possible, right kissers. Right in quotation marks. That's the simplest way to do it. So P is the proportion of all people that are kissing with their head tilted to the right. So we're going to define, and then we're going to set up our ho and ha. So ho, sorry, P equals, now, don't get pulled off by the 0.669. We're talking about the, ex the experiment here. So the number we're using is 0.5, 50%. They're asking, do more than 50% do this? So therefore, P is 0.5. The ha, 
is going to be, is it greater than 0.5? Because they say they suspect that. So, remember I said earlier, you don't know how to do this yet. You don't know how to get, you don't know how to get this P, this P value. You'll figure it out later. We'll give you a calculation for that. All right? <coughs> that comes later. It's basically the area under the curve. Which we've already talked about many times so far. The p value is the same thing as the area under the curve. That thing on that A chart we've been using. All right? So, what is it? What does it mean? It is the probability. Probability of getting evidence. I was writing this as here's. Okay, it's probability of getting evidence to calculate. Oh yeah, sorry. That uh, p is greater than 0.5. If the ho is true, technically the null, null hypothesis, but we'll put it right to ho. Now, what are we going to make for a decision? Well, we have our p value and we have our alpha. The p value was 0 0.0001. I was giving this up here. The alpha was 0.5. So is it less than or greater than? Less than. Less than. So we reject the hoe. 